Here's one of the most cost-effective and tax-effective ways for an ordinary mortal on a salary to own a new car. Novated leasing, also called salary sacrifice, makes real sense to a lot of employees. It's often the best way to own a new car. You can even do it on late model used cars. I'm John Cadogan, the founder of autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands on their next new cars when they're not roasting on Bondi Beach watching European tourists work on their melanomas. I handle a lot of Novated Leasing inquiries every month. But first, a quick note. I really appreciate your interest in my reports from all over the world. I get a lot of correspondence from viewers in the USA, Canada, the UK, Europe and Asia. But if that's you, I don't want to waste your valuable time here and now. This report is going to be quite Aussie-centric, if that's a word. Just saying. A novated lease is really just a simple three-way agreement between you, your employer and a finance company. Basically, you agree to make the payments and they come out of your pre-tax salary. The federal government gives you a big fat 80% free kick on the fringe benefits tax, even if the vehicle never ever gets used for work. Your employer makes the payments as a payroll deduction and they come out of your pre-tax salary. So some of the money you would have otherwise paid in income tax helps you get the car. That's where the term salary sacrifice comes from. That also reduces your taxable income. And the finance company, it does the administrative heavy lifting. They also technically own the car and they lease it to you, which is why it's called a novated lease. The lease part is a huge benefit to you too, really. You know, the finance company buys the car as part of their operational expenditure. And that means they get to claim the GST as an input tax credit. So effectively, they get the GST back and they pass that saving on to you. Bottom line, you pay the ex-GST price for the car and on a 40 grand car, that's an upfront saving of $3,600, a walk up start with no negotiation required. On a 50 grand car, it's four and a half thousand bucks off. No questions asked. Show me the other way a normal employee gets the GST off a new car. More employers should agree to novated leases for their key staff and for purely selfish reasons. You know, think about it. If you're an employer, you want to motivate and incentivize your key employees because they're the ones making you the big bucks. You want to keep them pumping up the productivity but there's a small problem, you know, most incentives cost money, but a novated lease is essentially a zero cost incentive to you. Like here's that several thousand dollar saving up front, here's your free kick on the income tax front that effectively gets your employee either a better car for the same take home spend or the same car for a lower take home spend. And if the employee leaves the business, the lease is theirs. It departs with them. It's not a residual burden for you. So just to recap, the options are A, pay for a 20 grand trip to Hawaii for those key employees and their wives and or girlfriends, or organise a payroll deduction and fill out a few forms. Do you really need me to play some thinking music while you equivocate? It's a no friggin' brainer. This is a virtual zero cost option for the employer with huge benefits on the table for the employee and it's a super effective incentive for those employees who are critical to the success of your business. Some employers shy away from offering novated leases because they're concerned about the administrative burden. Newsflash, there isn't one, the financier handles that. Sometimes they're concerned about being stuck with the car if they bone the employee or if the employee bones them. Newsflash, the car and the finance leaves the building with the departing employee. There's nothing dodgy whatsoever about novated leases. They're not a scam. They're a fully government sanctioned free kick. One of the last great free kicks left if you're not a multinational corporation with a tax haven. 
The Novated Lease can also be arranged as a fully maintained package, so essentially there are two flavours of Novated Lease. It's either just the car or the car plus all of the associated running costs. And in the second case, the car plus the expenses, you get the car and a credit card. The cost of the fuel, the servicing, comprehensive insurance, all of that, i.e. all of the car operating costs, they go on the card. And you can buy this stuff wherever you want. Get the car serviced wherever, choose your preferred insurer, whatever. Usually you just log into an online portal and you track how you're going with real expenditure against projected expenditure. And the same tax benefits pertain to the costs. So that's nice. There's a free kick right there. I'm not a financial advisor and I can't tell you if a novated lease is right for you. That depends on you and you should definitely consult your accountant and get their imprimatur before you jump. But if you sign up for a novated lease, here's the three things you absolutely must get. First, get the GST off the price of the car. That's a given. Second, get a further significant fleet discount off the price of the car because that novated lease provider sure as shit qualifies for fleet discount prices with every brand and they should pass those hefty fleet discounts on to you. And third, get a decent low interest rate. The cash rate is 1.5% in Australia right now so do not let them extort you on the finance. It all sounds kind of foolproof, right? Well. It's not. Here's the bad news. Here's the one thing you must be wary of and guard against. Big employers often prefer to jump into bed with one novated lease provider, the better to grope the other's external wedding vegetables in private, and also to simplify logistics. This is the point where novated leasing often goes downhill for you, the employee. See, as soon as they're in bed together and the lights are off, massaging the veggies bilaterally, lock it in, as Eddie would say, the leasing company stops trying hard to please you. They don't have to compete anymore, right? Commonly in this situation, they pass on the GST saving to you, but they conveniently forget to give you that juicy fleet discount and the interest rate gets the nose up and fires off the afterburner. And you really must watch out for that because the GST and the pre-tax benefit is simply not enough. You need the other two elements, the fleet discount and the low interest rate to make this worthwhile. And the other thing to watch out for is covert insurance policies for this and that secretly bundled into the deal and which are put there on an opt-out basis. You could argue a pretty strong case that the fundamental reason they are there is not to provide a good safety net for you, but instead an excellent set of fees and commissions for the financier. And I know how much I like seeing a financier get rich at my expense. Doubtless we're on the same page on this, right? Do not get railroaded by a lazy, locked-in, novated lease provider, amping up the fees and charges, whatever. Do the sums, because there are other ways to get decent car finance. And it's philosophically reprehensible to see an asshole financier profit from your hard work just because your employer has unwittingly engineered the uncompetitive perfect storm vis-a-vis -vis the aforementioned exclusive bilateral ve vegetable mashing arrangement, no matter how satisfying that might seem for them in the moment. If you want help with a new car, the finance, novated lease, whatever, hit me up via the website. And remember, always be yourself. Unless you can be a Jedi Knight. In that case, always be the Jedi. It's the secret to happiness, and you heard it here first. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.